the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> What does E-M-A-N-S-O-U-M-A-F spell? E-M-A-N-S-O-U-M-A-F. Well, what? Spelled backward, it's famous name. Famous name? Hmm. Uh, did uh, someone say Anchor Hawking? How come Anchor Hawking? Why, everyone knows that Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey Crime Photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Lady in Distress. Early, about two o'clock, a narrow midtown street lined with raucous nightclubs. Wandering lazily along it is a tall, slim man whose costume in this metropolitan center is, well, bizarre to say the least. For from his ten-gallon hat to his high-heeled boots, he's every inch the cowboy. Suddenly, from a shadowed doorway, he hears... Mister! Huh? Mister, please! Are you talking to me, ma'am? Yes, come closer. Here, where we can't be seen... Well, sure, ma'am, but... but... I'm in desperate trouble, and I simply can't go to the police. Not yet. Well, I saw you. You're appearing in the rodeo, aren't you? Yes, ma'am, at the Coliseum. And you're from the South, like me. I come from Texas. You're not a part of this town, this street. I can trust you. Well, I reckon you can, ma'am. Uh, what you want I should do, I... Get a cab here for me, and then ride with me to Union Terminal. Well, I'd be glad to, but why? Well, all I can tell you is... Some men are looking for me, and if I'm found, I may be killed. So you and Casey took in the Rodeo last night, huh, Miss Webb? No. Casey went alone, Ethel. Yeah, I went alone. I saw a swell show, too. <laughs> Poor Miss Williams. She had a date with her aunt and uncle. They spent the evening at Pinky Bannister's. That clip joint? Yeah, her aunt and uncle are the adventurous type. <laughs> well, we had a little excitement at Bannister's Club. That South American playboy. Uh, you've heard of him, Ethelbert. Senior Gallo? Oh, yeah. Well, he and another inebriated gentleman got into a fist fight and had to be gently removed by Bannister's muscle men. They say that rich Gallo fellow always carries a gold-plated gun and a diamond-studded holster for his self-protection. <laughs> Did he... No, 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 there were no fireworks. Boy, but I saw the real action at the Rodeo, though. Guys bulldogging steers, roping wild longhorns. I really saw a show. Quite a few of them cowboys has been coming into this bar. Gee, their fancy dresses, yeah. you know? <laughs> Just like in them Gene Autry movies. Yeah, there's some swell fellas among them. I got fairly well acquainted with a bunch, taking publicity pictures and all that. Say, here comes one of them now. Hello, Casey. Howdy, Miss Williams. Hiya, Tom. Hello, Mr. Morrissey. Just finished your matinee? Yeah. Albert, shake hands with barbecue Tom Morrissey. Pleased to meet up with you. Glad to know you. Uh, Casey, I was over to your office a minute ago, and they said I'd find you here. Oh, you want to see me about something? Uh, yeah. Uh, would you excuse us, Miss Williams? Why, sure. Yes, of course. What's wrong, fella? You look kind of worried. I'm terribly worried, my... I know you well enough to figure you're a good man to come to for advice. Uh, last night, Casey, I met a young lady. Uh-oh, wait a minute. When it comes to women, Tom, I don't know from nothing. Well, you might know how I can find her. You met her last night and you lost her already? Well, she was in big trouble, Casey, and it was uh, really early this morning I met her. I was walking up a street near the Coliseum, sort of gawking up at them nightclub places, and she ran up and asked me to uh, get her in a cab. Some men were after her. Oh, and you fell for it, huh? Well, what happened after you and the gal got into the cab, Tom? Well, I tried to persuade her to tell me about the men she was afraid of, but she said she couldn't because it concerned her family honor. Family honor? Which was also the reason she couldn't go to the police. Oh. 
Did she tell you anything about herself? Well, only that her friends called her Mary Bell and uh, that she was from a fine old southern family. Uh, you say she was young and blonde and... And uh, beautiful. Uh, how much dough did she borrow from you? Uh, how'd you guess she borrowed money? Oh, I'm kind of good at that kind of guesses. How much? A hundred dollars. Now, look here, Casey. Don't you go getting wrong ideas about that little lady. She wasn't no gold digger. Uh -huh. What happened after she got your dough? Well, she got out of the cab and promised to meet me at noon today. I waited from noon till after two o'clock at the place she said she'd be, but she didn't show up. I've got to find her, Casey. And if them fellas she was afraid of has done her well, any harm... Can't you see, Tom, that you've been a fall guy for one of the oldest rackets in the world? I won't believe that. You know your way around this city. I don't know. How do I go about finding Mary Bell? You go down to police headquarters and tell your story. But I can't do that. She didn't want the police to know. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Well, for your future protection, pal, come across the street to the express building with me. We just might find a picture of your Mary Bell in our petty racket smile. Casey, I told you I wouldn't find anyone who looked like that little lady among your pictures of female crooks. Well, she's been smart enough not to get mugged for our files, I guess that's all. Who will you do now, as I asked you to do at first? Try to find a photo in your high society files. That's where she belongs. Oh, oh, yes, she's a good singer, too. Singer? Yes, she gave one of them concerts here once. She gave a concert? Uh-huh, she let that slip when I said she had a beautiful speaking voice. Hmm. Well... Let the humor you, Tom. We'll see what's cross-filed under concerts. That's her, Casey. That's a picture of Mary Bell. You're sure? Wait a minute, Tommy. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Uh, what's the stuff in the file say about her? Oh. Mary Bell Warren. Daughter of Stephen Warren, socially prominent banker. You see, Casey? Yeah, yeah I see. Concert, May 1945 at Maxwell Hall. House guest of Mrs. Donald P. Burgess. Hey, your Mary Bell must be the real goods. Mrs. Donald P. Burgess is big stuff I around I told here. you. Okay, I've been wrong before. Yeah. Now, I want to find this gal and know what goes on as much as you do. This looks like the beginning of a front-page story. Let me get that phone. But what are you going to do? Uh, wait a minute. Hello, this is Casey, operator. Get me Mrs. Donald P. Burgess. That's right. Mrs. Donald P. Burgess. Yeah, th thanks very much, Mrs. Burgess. I know I've given you cause for worry, and I'm sorry. Yes, I'll call you back the moment we learn anything. Goodbye. What'd she say, Casey? Mary Bell Warren phoned her shortly after 2 o'clock this morning. That must have been right after she left me. That's right, Tom. She asked Mrs. Burgess if she could come up to her place. That she had to have some advice. You see? Something happened to her. Well, yeah, the girl never did show up. I'm afraid that's the way it adds up, too. Whatever happened must have started, though, about three months ago. What do you mean? Because Mrs. Burgess said that Miss Warren and her family are old friends, you see. And three months ago, she got a letter from the gal's mother in the South saying that Mary Bell had abruptly decided to come here. And that phone call this morning is the first that anyone has heard from. Well, what in tarnation do you suppose? Well, wow, what basis have I got to suppose anything? A strange babe takes you for a hundred bucks with what sounds like the gal in distress gag. And she turns out to have a millionaire father and top hat social connections. Well, we're wasting time here. We've got to find that little lady. Ah, wait a minute. That's too big a job for you and me, pal. We've got to take this to the cops. Neil, I guess you're right. Yeah, I'll probably crab my chance for an exclusive, but... I will take this picture of Miss Warren and get him started. Casey? Oh, hello, Annie. Hey, Annie, come in here a minute. Where? Look, you get a lot of wound page assignments. Ever run across the blonde in this picture? Oh, face is familiar. Hey, Casey, I saw her last night. You what, huh? You saw her last night? Yeah, at Pink Bannister's Club. Pink Bannister's? Yeah, she's a singer there. In that lousy joint? Oh, yeah, she did seem awfully out of place. She looked like a lady, and she had a sweet voice. Well, why have you got her picture? Come on, I'll tell you on our way to Pink Bannister's. What makes you interested in my blonde singer, Casey? Oh, Miss Williams heard her here last night, Pink. Thought she was good. Mm, good a... enough to deserve a little free publicity, Mr. Bannister. This cowboy gonna help you get it? I've already explained that Tom Morrissey is a friend of ours. We just brought him along. That's right. Uh, huh? uh, what's the girl's name, Mr. Bannister? I didn't catch it last night. Her name's Lottie Dunbar. Lottie Dunbar. Yeah. How long she worked for you? Oh, 
About two months. Where does she live? Montrose Hotel. Oh, not a very classy joint. How late does she work here? Well, her last floor show is 3 a.m. Did she work that late this morning? No, no. She said she was sick. She left early. We need more than that information. I want to know why she now, left here. Wait a minute, Tom. I asked you to keep your mouth shut. I'm sorry, Chief. Hey, I don't get this. All right. Maybe we'll give it to you straight. We have reason to believe that something's happened to Lottie Dunbar. Something's happened? Yeah. What made her leave here early? I've already told you. Did she come to you and say she was sick? Yeah, here in my office. Now, that's all I know. Was um, anyone with you at the time? Uh, yeah, a couple of chumps had gotten into a fight on the floor. My boys had brought him in here for a cooling off. I talked one of them out of it, sent him home. The other was still in here with me. Well, that checks, Casey. I told you about that fight, and I saw Gallo leave this office. And the other man hadn't come out when I left with Uncle Wilmer. Hey, who was this other man, Pink? Oh, just a quarrelsome drunk I'd never met before and I never want to see again. Well, after I collected the bill he owed, one of my boys put him out, told him not to come back. Now, uh, suppose you tell me why you think something happened to the Dunbar girl. Well, there's too long a story to go into now. But if we don't find her soon in good health, you'll hear all about it from the cops. I can't tell them any more than I've told you, Casey. Okay, Pink. Come on, Annie, let's go. Come on, Tom. Try the Montrose Hotel. So long, Pink. So long. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, huh? Hello. Yeah, boss. Come here. Want me I should follow them wise guys? Yeah, I want to know every place they go and about everyone they talk to. I'll be with them all the way. And, uh, if it seems necessary... Sure, boss. <laughs> I know what to do. <laughs> Our story will continue in just a moment. Well, Alex, here's tonight's question. What was the world's first one-way container? Shoot, Tony. What was the world's first one-way container? An egg. An egg? Say, you're right. When you open an eggshell, you know that you're the first and last to use it. And it's the same way with the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. It's never been used before. It will never be used again. The Anchor Glass one-way bottle brings you beer and ale as it's meant to taste. Clean, clear, sparkling. Beer that's brewery bright. Unaffected by any foreign flavor. And when you've enjoyed the beer, you dispose of the empty bottle as you would any other food container. No deposit, no fuss, no empties to be returned. The one-way bottle. The safest, most convenient way to buy beer. Yes, indeed. And that's why the revolutionary new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle is sweeping America. For perfect flavor, demand beer in glass bottles. For extra convenience, demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. A product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Tell manager told us Mary Bell didn't come home this morning and ain't been seen since yesterday, Miss yeah. Williams. No, I figured all this would be a waste of time. Well, let's get back to the car. Okay. There's one thing to do now, and that's go to the cops. Which means goodbye exclusive. Miss Williams, how can you think of newspaper stories when that little lady may be heard oh, of? I'm sorry, Mr. Morris. Yeah, see, Tom, we got to be impersonal in our jobs. If we weren't, we... Hey, hey, wait. What? That guy getting into the green car up ahead of us. Dad! Seems to me that green convertible was behind us when we drove up here. It was. I noticed it. Hey, Casey, I just placed that man. He was one of the bouncers who broke up the fight in Bannister's place last night. Oh, that's very interesting, Annie. All right, I'll start our car and see what he does. You and Tom, keep an eye on him. Okay. He's following us, all right. Is he alone in the car? Yeah. He may be closer to information about Mary Bell Warren than we figured a few minutes ago. That guy is tailing us. I've got an idea. (laughs) 
His car lights are only about 100 yards behind us now, Casey. Uh, I thought he'd creep up on us. All right, get ready for action, Tom. I'm ready. Now, look, Casey, the man in that car will have a gun, and neither you nor Mr. Morris... Tom never... and I know what's going to happen, Annie. That muck doesn't. We're coming to another turn. Okay, now brace yourself. I'm shutting the brakes on hard. He's going to hit us, Casey. No. No, he's swerving off the ropes. Had to. We're in the middle of it. His car's in the ditch. All right, come on, Tom, quick. I'm with you. You stay here, Annie. Drive our car to the road tire. Yeah, okay, I know my car. Stop, 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 stop. Hey, take your hands off me. Oh, take that gun. That's yeah, something I did. You guys forced me off the road and then don't you play me. innocent. Are you going to tell us what you know about Mary Bell Warren? I don't know what you're talking about. You're one of Pink Bannister's gang. You've been following us. You got me wrong. We've got you <laughs> right. You choked in me, cowboy. I'll squeeze the daylights out Wait. unless you talk. What? What's happened to Mary Bell Warren? <laughs> I never heard of that name before, I swear. Change your tune. Easy, Tom, wait a minute. He doesn't know that name. What happened to Lottie Dunbar? The lady who was singing in your boss's place. Talk. You better talk, punk. You haven't got a gun now. All right. I... Talk, I said. I will. If you won't go to work, I mean... I'll spill all I got. But it ain't much, honest. All right, spill what you got. Okay. Well, last night, there was a fight in the club, see? Between two drunks. Yeah, that South American guy, Gallo. And, a, and an, another guy I, I never seen before. Me and the head bouncer, Jim Robbins, we broke it up. And Pink had to shag the scrappers and it was private office. Pink told me to get back into the club, but Jim stayed in the office. All right, go on. Well, a little later, I, I get a rush call from Jim to go with him. And all he tells me is that this here babe, this Lottie Dunbar, has just been caught snooping on the boss's private business. But for us to go get her. This was just before 2 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Well, me and Jim rush out of the joint just in time to see you get into a cab with this here cowboy. So you followed us? No, no, I didn't follow. Jim sent me back to tell Pink everything was under control. Jim Robbins followed us. Yeah, in another cab. I don't know what happened after that, honest. You're lying. This is how me, I ain't, I ain't. What did Pink say when you told him Robbins had everything under control? Well, he, he said to keep my mouth shut, that's all. And I ain't seen Jim Robbins since... I swear I don't know what's happened to that damn wife. Tell the truth, you honor a skunk. Wait, wait, hold it, Tom, hold it. Bannister's a cagey guy. He wouldn't let a punk like this in on anything big. And kidnapping is plenty big. We'll go to Bannister. I'll beat the truth out. Wait a minute, wait. You, Mug. You said the girl was caught snooping while Gallo and that other guy were in Pink's office. Uh, that's the way I got it from Jim. I think Senor Gallo is the guy for us to call on next, Tom. Come on, punk, you're traveling with us. <laughs> I can tell you nothing more. When I was in that Bannister club last night, a strange man insulted me, and I struck him. Then in his office, Senor Bannister made the man apologize, and I came back here to my hotel. That is all that happened in Senor Bannister's office. I think you're forgetting something that happened there, Mr. Gallo. No, no. Yes, look here. The girl has been kidnapped, possibly killed, because she saw or overheard something in Bannister's office that you can tell us about. You got to cover up for the rats that snatched her? I do not know. You do know. I'm sure of it because you're scared. You're scared and it shows in every move you make, every word you say. What are you afraid of, Gallo? Well, I... If you don't tell us, mister, we'll find out. Yes, you... You will find out. And the police... I was a fool to think it could be kept this secret. Let's have it. Last night in that office, I... I killed a man. You... Casey. You killed a man? Yes, I am a murderer. Who did you kill? The man who insulted me. I was drinking too much champagne, and I... I have bad hot temper. In that office, this man insulted me again. I remember that. Then I struck him. Then he hit me back hard and knocked me down. Everything went black. When I again knew what was going on, Senor Bannister and a man who worked for him were holding my arms. The man who hit me was on the floor, dead. And it was my gun that shot him. What happened then? Senor Bannister, he, he said he will not tell police. He said he and that man who worked for him will hide the dead body and, and protect me. That's what Mary Bell overheard, Casey. Yes, of course. Mm. What did Bannister say it had cost you for his protection, Mr. Gallo? Oh, he did not say anything. He only told me to go home, that he will take care of everything and... I will hear from you. Oh, you'll hear from him, all right. We've got all we need to nail Bannister now, Casey. Well, I'll say we have. While you call the police to arrest this murderer, I'll be on my way to Bannister's place. 
I'm going to make him tell me what's been done to Mary Bell, and if she ain't alive... Now wait, Tom, I... wait. We'd only be tipping our hand, maybe losing our chance of finding that girl. Casey, right, Miss Morrissey. Well, what shall we do? Well, first I'll call the cops. To arrest me? Yes, Mr. Gallo. Thing doesn't add up. Not at all. What do you mean, Casey? I... Oh, hello, headquarters. Connecting with Homicide, will you, Captain Logan? <clears throat> Tom, here's what I mean. Yeah. If Miss Warren was snooping on Bannister while he covered up a murder, he had reason for kidnapping her. But why was she snooping? Why was she working in his joint? Why didn't she run to the cops? Yeah, there's a lot of funny things. Yeah, including that crack about her family honor. And another thing... I'd... Oh, wait a minute. Hello, Logan. It's Casey speaking. Listen, Logan, I'm going to be down to headquarters in about 20 minutes with a very wealthy senior, Jose Gallo. Because he says he's a murderer. Yeah, he just made a confession. Yeah, well, wait a minute. Now, let me tell you something now that's really important. Put a tap on Pink Bannister's telephone lines, Logan. Yeah, right away, yes. And put a shadow on him, too, the best you got. I I'll tell you why when I see you. Logan, it's too long a story to go into now. But do it, will you, pal? And quick, we're starting right away. Goodbye. Tom, I think we can expect action from Mr. Pink Bannister very soon. You want him shadow? And uh, his phone line tap. Because he's going to receive a report from one of his hired hands as soon as it's done. Who? The punk right here. Who, me? Yes, you. With my fingers around your neck. And you'll tell him you're still spying on us. That we've been talking to Senor Gallo, that we've just left his hotel with him. And you overheard us say we were taking him to police headquarters. We'll be at police headquarters when you phone that report. I get it, Casey. Bannister will guess that Gallo's confessed to it, and he'll make some kind of a break. I think so, Annie. You know, I've acquired a hunch about that family honor gag of Mary Bell's. Oh? What is it? Uh-uh. I don't know. It's the kind of hunch I might talk myself out of if I talked about it. Let's get down to Logan's. <laughs> Nearly five minutes since that mug phoned our dictated report, Casey. You figured Bannister'd make a move right well, after. Look, allow him a few minutes to think, Logan. A punk handed him a shock with that news about Gallo. Also, the man on his tap wire and those covering the club have to have time to phone you after he does something, Captain. Now, this phone's completely cleared for their calls, Miss Williams. And if Casey hasn't guessed wrong... If Casey's guessed wrong, Miss Maribel's life won't be worth a nickel. Well, will you give my guess a chance, Tom? Uh, hey, there's our ring. Logan speaking. Now, go ahead. Yeah? Yeah? One, two, eight, seven. Jastrow Street? I got it. Okay, Flanagan, get out there the quick way. We'll be right behind you. Bannister's left the club? Yeah, just now, with two guys tailing him and Sergeant Flanagan with the squad going direct as we'll go. Come on. <laughs> Gone into the house, Captain. That's all I've been waiting for, cowboy. My men have the joint completely surrounded. Come on. That big window in front, Logan? Yeah, watch out for flying glass, Miss Williams. Yeah, my head's down, Captain. Here goes. Hands up, Bannister! You two other mugs! Now get the cuffs on the man. Come on, you two guys. Hey, that black haired man, Casey, he's huh? the one Gallo had the fight with. Yeah. Alive! That proves my hunch, Annie. He's the guy Gallo was supposed to have murdered. Supposed to have yes, murdered? Yes, Logan, there wasn't any killing. Those guys simply put on an act that was convincing to Gallo. They expected to collect millions for covering up his crime, but Miss Warren got wise to the gag and Gallo confessed. Where's Miss Mary, Bell? If you've harmed one hair of her head, Bannister... And she hasn't been hurt. We she... found the girl, Captain. Mary Bell! Oh, Mr. Morrissey, I knew you'd find me. Well, that's a pretty picture. Hold it, will you? <laughs> Looks like romance, Casey. Uh-huh. At least a reasonable facsimile there. How'd you get wise to this fake murder business, Casey? Well, Logan, all the parts wouldn't fit together in any other pattern. Uh, look, after I get a few more pictures, I'll tell you why. Uh, smile for the camera, Bannister, will you? Uh, you dirty lousy. <laughs> Such a sour disposition. <laughs> We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. You've often heard a woman say, I don't mind washing dishes so much, but oh, those pots and pans. That's because she uses ordinary pots and pans. Now, when you use Fire King oven glass, you reduce that tiresome kitchen drudgery to a minimum. First, because Fire King oven glass is so amazingly easy to clean. Fire King is a special non-porous surface that's literally mirror smooth. It comes clean in a jiffy. 
and never absorbs baking stains or odors. Now, second, you save dishwashing time because you bake, serve, and store leftovers all in the same Fire King dish. You'll find a wide variety of Fire King casseroles, pie plates, and general utility dishes in all sizes at chain and department stores and wherever household glass is sold, all at amazingly low prices, all guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Ask for Fire King oven glass by name. Fire King is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Mary Bell Warren had taken a job at Bannister's joint in order to spy on him, huh, Casey? Hmm. Well, we know now, Ethelbert, that Bannister worked his fake murder gag on Miss Warren's brother about a year ago. Has been blackmailing him ever since. Her brother finally confessed the supposed killing to Mary Bell, and she refused to believe that he'd murder anyone. So she came down here under an assumed name to get the lowdown. That guy Bannister had some racket making people believe they were murderers and then blackmailing them. Yep. Uh -huh. That's exactly what they did to Mary Bell's brother, who, like Gallo, had been drinking too much to think straight, you know. There's one thing I don't quite get yet. What's that? Uh, Miss Mary Bell Warren had money. Why did she borrow a hundred from that cowboy? <laughs> oh, she's a smart babe, pal. In case Bannister's mugs caught up with her, you see, as Jim Robbins did. Uh huh? She figured the loss of a hundred bucks would make Tom try to find her. <laughs> She's convinced now that he, he didn't need such an incentive. Think him and her are going to team up this way? Well, looks like an order for a double harness. Yeah, it really does. You know, Ethelbert, I suppose your, your sister Edna would say, uh, quote, two can live as cheaply as one, unquote. Oh, no, Casey. No? Well, she knows better than that. Oh. She says, quote, Anybody can be a cowboy. All you gotta do is sit on your kitchen stove and sing Home, Home on the Range. Unquote. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers... Anchor caps and closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deets. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Once a year, you have the wonderful opportunity of helping your community through your community chest. You're urged to give generously because in no other way can so many needy people and so many worthy causes be helped so well. The community chest. Everybody gives, everybody benefits. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Say, Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.